All right, there we go. Welcome everyone to uh, our April edition of Cloudy County. This is our extension themed uh, learning community where we get to go through and explore how to do really cool things in the cloud. And our objective, our goal is always to show you something that makes your life easier. We don't want to uh, make anything more complicated than necessary because we know if it's not easier, you're not going to do it. <laughs> so uh, we want to show some benefit around a lot of the things that we uh, we are showing off. And it's kind of cool. We forgot to talk about this last month, but I don't know if you all know this. We've been showing you this for almost exactly one year. So we just had Cloudy County just had its one year uh, birthday, I guess, anniversary birthday <laughs> i don't know what to call it pretty sure it's not old enough to drink yet uh but we're getting there um <laughs> so. definitely appreciate some of you uh been here this whole time so and uh appreciate that yeah yeah this has been a lot of fun and i hope to continue to uh grow this and joe and i hope to continue to provide value uh to our extension fam so um thank you all for hanging out with us uh, so this meeting is, I'm mean, so excited about this. <laughs> this meeting is the culmination of three months of meetings. And so if you're here for the first time, don't freak out. Uh, all of the meetings that we are talking about or that we'll reference have been recorded and are available on our YouTube, uh, YouTube channel playlist. We post them up there so that if you can't make the meeting, you can always watch the recording. I understand Extension professionals are always busy. Uh, and so if you're not here live, we thank you for watching the recording. Uh, but we're going to talk about two products, three technically, uh, and show you what you can do once you combine their powers. So like if you remember like Captain Planet, like we're basically going to go full on Captain Planet in Microsoft 365 and plug the power of three or four different apps together and show you what the end result is going to look like. So this is going to be live demonstration. We're going to be talking about Microsoft Forms that we've taught you that you can use for data collection. We're going to be talking about Microsoft Lists, which we talked a little bit about last month and tried to, I hope, articulate pretty well just why it's so much more powerful than a spreadsheet. Like a spreadsheet is just simply rows and columns. That's pretty much it. You can make a pivot table out of it, sure. But who wants to do that? Uh, Microsoft Lists is so much more than that. You're you're getting eking closer to the edge of it becoming like a true database. Then we're going to bring in an app that we showed you kind of early on as a teaser inside of the forms demonstrations, which is something called Power Automate. Power Automate is the automation engine in the cloud. It can talk to all the different pieces and parts of the Microsoft cloud. That's where the real power starts to happen because now when someone fills something into forms, we can know about it and we can do something with it. So we're gonna take our data, push it into Microsoft lists. And then we might, uh, if we have time, show you another you know, way that you could collect data and then show you how you might be able to visualize that data. So I'm going to share my screen. And Joe, hopefully that's hopefully that's coming through. Looking, Looking good. good. Awesome. All right. So the first thing, that, and we're going to go really, really fast. So if you have your computer up, uh, you're going to want to go to office.com. If you want to follow along with us, if you just want to watch, that's fine. I understand if you don't have like two screens, it can be kind of challenging to go back and forth and see what I'm talking about and also do it. Uh, you could maybe do that with the recording, uh, you know. It's up to you what you want to do, but hopefully if you can follow along, please do. So we're in teams, right? I've got a few of my teams here and I'm going to do everything that I'm going to do. I'm going to do it in the Cloudy County team uh, so that you can actually access it and see it and play with it and look at it. Uh, so first off, we are going to create a folder inside of our team. So we're going to go folder here. And we're going to call this uh, volunteer. Uh, what would you what do you think joe uh volunteer requests sure we'll go with yep. that so we've got volunteer requests now remember behind your form is an excel document 
uh, that was one of the big benefits that we wanted to show of forms versus other survey tools is that the Excel file that is connected to a form is live. Like as people are entering data into your form, that Excel document will be updated. And we demonstrated that. And I think I had my screen shared while y'all were filling it out and we could see the results coming in live as I was looking at the Excel document. So number one, that's a huge benefit there of you don't have to download the Excel file every day and like import the new stuff into the one Excel file that you and your whole team is working on. You just need to give them access to this Excel file. Now, because we're doing this in a team, all of my teammates will already have access to this file. So we're gonna create our form backwards. We're gonna create the file first instead of creating the form first. Doing it this way gives me the most control over where my Excel file is gonna live. I wanna, I wanna tell it where to put it. I don't want it to bury it deep in the, in the bowels of SharePoint somewhere <laughs> where I'll never find it. I wanna tell it where I want it. And that's super easy to do. If you just hit the new menu at the top of the files tab, you'll see right there, there's new forms for Excel. So if you didn't know, you can generate brand new documents directly from this menu. You don't have to build it on your computer first and then drag it and drop it over. Uh, so we're gonna go new forms for Excel. Now there's a couple of nuances to this that Joe and I have discovered that are a little weird. So we're gonna call this uh, volunteer requests.xlsx. As soon as I hit create, this is gonna shoot me out to forms. Okay, now, Joe, do we call this a bug? What do we call this? Uh, I think the, I guess, is that the Excel team needs to get together with the forms team? I'm not sure, <laughs> maybe somewhere. I don't know. Here. I got some uh, reporting to do, I know that. Uh, <laughs> so bear with me here. Hopefully this won't look like this in the future. It's probably pretty hard to see at first glance, but this is the old interface for working with forms. This is not the new hotness interface that gives you the styles and the videos and the, and the, you know, the theming that you could do that's really cool. This is the old interface. And the reason why I know that, and this is probably going to be a little hard to see, but the web address just says design page. So I'm going to just click out of this, like, boom, I'm out. So my form is created, though. How do I get back to it? Probably good for you to know this anyway, so that you can find other forms. Uh, first of all, it's already added it to my quick access list. Forms are kind of like files, like they're kind of like documents that you collaborate and work on with other people. So it's in my quick access list right away. I can also get to it through the app launcher. If I go into forms here, uh, we'll, we should see it in my quick access list there as well. So there it is. It also tells me the group that it belongs to. So I can see cloudy County extension. I can also scroll down and find it in my uh, groups. So groups and teams are synonymous in this case. So my group is Cloudy County Extension. I can see all the forms that have been created that belong to that group. These are all forms that everybody on my team can all edit and work on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on volunteer requests. Now look at this. This looks way better and design page v2 so we have upgraded <laughs> uh this is one of those weird quirks nuances to how how this how to get where you want to go uh i can also see that joe has already jumped in here with me so again thinking about a form like a document it does support co-authoring so joe could start typing in some stuff for me uh, now, Joe, if you could get the name and kind of that stuff kind of prepped for me, uh, I'm going to show everybody our file that we have. Now, Joe, poor Joe, Joe grew up in like, I don't know, Indiana or something weird. Um, <laughs> and I found out today that Indiana has a lot of counties. Here's all the counties. 87. I didn't know that was that big of a state. In Florida, we have 67 counties. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to build a form that's collecting information from a human. I want to know, I want to know their first name, their last name, their email address, uh, maybe their phone number, and then I want to know what county they're from. Do you think 
it would take a few minutes to type in 87 different counties. <laughs> you know, we've already got it right here in Excel. So I'm just going to copy this. We're going to go back over to forms. And I see Joe has already started working on this. Like it, this is one of the beautiful things about this is it's very collaborative. It's live. I didn't refresh the page. Joe just started working, doing stuff, helping me out while I'm telling you the rest. So we're going to add a new question. And then real quick, we're going to look at phone number. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, the ability to turn on restrictions. So you can see that Joe has set this to a number restriction. This is useful in some cases. And in our second demonstration, you'll see why this is, is pretty nifty. But you can lock this down to make sure that somebody doesn't enter the wrong thing inside of a field that should only contain a phone number. You can even set, I think, maximum length on here, can you? Yeah, it's got to be less than or equal to. Uh, or exactly equal to. So you could say, I only want your phone number in the 10 digit format, you know, or I don't know, maybe you need the country code and it needs to be 11. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but just know that that capability is there. We are going to add a new question and it's going to be a choice question. Now, remember, we had 87 counties. So select your county. I'm going to go ahead and make this a drop down because I don't think anybody is going to want to see 87 radio buttons. Uh, that's going to make the page really big. And I'm just going to control V. And there they all are. So that's number one power tip. If you have your data already in Excel, it's just copy and paste. Just copy paste. So now we're going to, uh, so we did phone, we did county. Now we're going to do another choice column, ethnicity. So I know that, whoops, I can't spell it apparently. The demographics uh, are important to collect off. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. I know everybody is, uh, is under some sort of requirement to select, uh, not select, to collect demographics. So boom, we just pasted them all in. So now we're going to go into our next one. We're going to do gender. And Joe, if you could clean up after me and mark these as required while I'm while I'm doing this, I would appreciate that. I can see the little uh, red asterisk is already set on those. Oh, perfect. Whoops, I'm going to get this whole block right here. And add new choice age range. That's always a fun one. OK, so that is how easy it is if you've already got this data somewhere, which I know you do because you've got years and years and years of stuff that you've been doing. If you've already got most of the questions you want to ask in a convenient place like Notepad, Excel, Word, whatever, uh, you can just copy paste, boom, right in there. And so our form, our form is done. <laughs> our, our form is mostly done. Um, we told you last time, let me, how do I make this go away? Leave me alone, maybe later, uh, that you can preview your form. So it's always a good idea, preview your form. This will show you what it would look like to the person who's filling it out. It also gives you an opportunity, and you may not have known this, you can actually fill this out. So I'm going to go Dwayne Hyatt, Dwayne.Hyatt at shift show. Uh, my number is 352-867-5309. Bet y'all thought I was going to put in the real one. Uh, Joe, what county did you grow up in? Boone. I bet it was Boone. Uh, um, Typical, why, yeah. no. What? No, I, I grew up in Michigan. It was Purdue University is uh, where I spent my college years. Okay. So <laughs> submit. So I just submitted my response. I haven't shared this form yet. I'm just testing it. I'm giving it a test drive, making sure things line up the way that I want them to. So I'm done with this Excel file. This was my source of my questions. So let's go take a peek at the Excel file. Uh, ooh, who's SharePoint app? Because whoever SharePoint app is just modified this Excel file. Oh, that's cool. Dwayne, so there's all my data. So. This is not anything shocking, new information to any of you, I hope, because we've talked about forms for two months straight. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully you're like, 
Come on, Dwayne, show me the good stuff. Uh, there's boom. And that's a really good, thank you, Joe, for doing that. I knew you would. Uh, that's a good example of the, how this is live. You don't have to, again, you don't have to go in and do a daily export from this thing. You, the, this is a living, breathing Excel document. As this form is getting filled out, it, you know, it's getting injected right into this Excel file. All right. Uh, uh, real also quick on that Excel note, file, you you don't usually want to touch much of the data that's you can you can remove column like you can re remove a row if you need to that um, doesn't need to be there. But let forms manage the columns uh, and the information there, um, yeah. and uh, just kind of kind of leave that file as and and you'll see why we're moving you to SharePoint is that's kind of your your raw data. Yeah, raw data is a good way to think about that. Now you can create extra sheets, do you know uh, functions, you do some calculations data. off of it. Sometimes, yeah, yeah you can yeah. do some calculations and summary yeah. off of it. Yeah. But I mean, take take a peek at that that tab right there. That's a special tab that this form is connected to this sheet. Uh, so you can make another sheet and do whatever you want with it, uh, and it won't break your form. And so that's fine. Um, all right. I wanted to point out the mobile button here. Whoops. Uh, let me go back. Preview mobile. Uh, this is pretty nifty because this gives you an idea of what the form would look like on a smaller screen. You know, you could even do it from your computer if you wanted to, I guess. Uh, and you could embed that form. So that's some somewhat what it looks like if you were to embed that on another website somewhere too. Yeah. Uh, your styles here lets you stylize it. So now it looks pretty, you know, I've got volunteers raising their hands. That's a little bit of the AI. It saw me say volunteer raising a hand is kind of connected to volunteering for something. I volunteers tribute and you fill the form out. Uh, so that's pretty handy. The settings of the form are important by default. This form will be set. So the only people in your organization can respond. There are some cases where that is fine. There are some cases where maybe it's an internal request pr process. I'm, I'm using forms to collect travel requests. Well, you don't want somebody from another state or another country or whatever filling out your travel request form. So you can lock the form down to only allow folks who have a login within your organization. In this case, we're collecting information for volunteers. We want anybody to be able to fill it out. So we're just gonna say anyone can respond. Uh, you have some options here on if there's a specific duration that you want to accept requests. Maybe we're only taking volunteers between you know, next week and the end of the month. You could do that uh, and you could set that, that duration there. Um, so, all right, I think we're good. What do you think, Joe? Think we're good? That's a good good start to that form. Okay, so we've got our collection mechanism created. Now we want to create our database that where this data is going to go. Uh, so we're going to go back into Teams and close out our Excel file. And right in the community calls channel, I'm going to create a new tab. Uh, this tab is going to be Microsoft Lists. Hopefully some of you were here last uh last week, last month when we talked about this. Uh, but list is a powerhouse. It does so much stuff. So I'm going to create a list and I'm going to just make it from blank. Um, I, some of these are okay. Exercise caution when you say making a list from Excel, because if your Excel document is janky, your list is going to be janky. Okay. <laughs> so it really needs to be formatted very correctly. Uh, I'm just going to make a blank list. Uh, my list is going to be volunteer requests. So this is going to match everything else that we, uh, that we're doing. So tracking volunteer signups. And uh, I like the robot. And I like blue because we're from the cloud and we're here to help. So we're creating our list. Now your list is going to look boring at first. That's fine. Uh, but we have to create some columns. Uh, similar to a spreadsheet, we've got rows and we've got columns. Uh, so we're going to create a new column and let's take a look at our uh, 
our form here. So we've got first name, last name, email. Okay, let's make some text ones. So we got this one's going to be first name. I mean, make make that last name because what I think we'll we'll show is that you can you can now rename the title. You're always going to get this default title column. Um, you can't really get rid of it, but you can rename it now. So we can uh, we could change that to a first name if we wanted to. Yeah. Uh, we've got text question, email. Can you hear my dog, Joe? He is losing his mind right now. <laughs> We're going to do a number column. Call that phone. Uh, we've got uh, county, ethnicity, text, county. So anytime it's just it's just something that's uh, a text string that somebody would have selected or maybe typed in um, manually. So we're going to go add another one text. The ethnicity. And then we've also got all right, go away. We've also got uh, gender, right? Is that our last one? Uh, we got an age. Oh, that's right. Um, OK. Sorry, y'all. I know this is boring. We we could, um, you know, we our county is a drop down in our form. And in, in SharePoint, you can create the equivalent of a choice or a drop down. Also, um, in this case, typically because we our entry uh, into this form, in, in, our entry of data into this SharePoint list is coming from forms. Um, we usually aren't gonna update. The, all these columns inside of SharePoint. Um, I would probably in this case, just leave the county column as a text field and not match it up and make it a choice column also. Um, yeah, don't overthink just, it. Yeah, yep, just a little extra yeah. where if, if you were, you know, if you didn't have form as an input and you were doing it only in SharePoint here, that might be a reason why just to help you to guarantee you've got proper data. Yeah. Okay, so now what we have is we have a form. Behind that form, we have an Excel spreadsheet where our data is going, and we were calling that like your raw data. Uh, now we have a list. This list has the same name as our form because we manually gave it the same name. You don't have to do that. You could name it whatever you want. Uh, and we've created columns that match our questions that were on our uh on our form so but these two things are completely unaware of each other they both live and reside in the same team so that means every single person in this team has the ability to see and edit the stuff that they can edit my form they can look at my form and work on it with me and that was really cool you saw joe doing that with me live as we were here on the call uh we can work on the list, you know, he can look at the Excel data, but now we need to make that connection between between the two. So we're gonna go again, office.com is always where you start, right? Power Automate, that's where we're gonna start first. This is where the connection comes in. We are going to uh, create a flow. Now, this one's pretty e pretty neat. So you're gonna see lots of templates, lots and lots of, uh, I'll call these like getting started ideas. Like what are some things I could do with Power Automate? There's a lot that you could do. So create a task and planner when a channel post starts with the name to do. So like now all of a sudden becomes Anytime an email comes into a channel that starts with the words to do, this thing will automatically create a task and planner for you. You know, that's pretty cool. Saving messages to OneNote. Those are flows that you can run on demand. Uh, there are, are, is it on demand or instant flows versus automated flows? Automated flows require some sort of event to happen. We need to know when to run. Is it on a timer? Is it based on a specific action? So in our case, the action is going to be someone filled out our form. That's our action. Now, just walking through those templates um, is 
will help you understand all the interconnectedness you have with uh, the services in the mm -hmm. Microsoft 365 space. So it just gives you a really good understanding of how to connect up all of these services. Yeah, yeah. There's so many things that this plugs into. It's it's pretty pretty mind blowing. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go new flow. And rather than me trying to find the flow that does what I want, or rather than me trying to build it on my own, I'm gonna use the new AI capability here. Notice it said it's in preview, uh, but this is gonna allow you to describe what you want. What do I want this thing to do? So I take, uh, you know, uh, send forms responses to a SharePoint list. Enter. Uh, and it suggested, here's what you would do to make that happen. You would need a trigger when someone responds to your form. You need an action where we're going to get the details of what they filled out. And then we need to take those details and create an item in a SharePoint list. It gave me exactly what I needed. <laughs> I'd have to type anything in. And so now we're in this wizard driven interface where it's like, hey, here's your connectors. And in some cases you might need to sign in uh, to make these connections happen because your flow that you're running needs to have access to these items. It's running as you. This is, uh, I don't wanna get off the rails too bad, but there's some considerations that you need to take when you're doing these to decide, is this a, long, is this a really important process that's gonna live on for a really long time? You might want to get with your IT people and ask about having the ability to create this under what we would call a service account, uh, an account that isn't necessarily tied to a specific human being, but it can be given the license required in order for it to do, to do this automation task. And now you don't have a single point of failure with, with a human person. Uh, if somebody moves on to a different role or whatever, this thing will continue to run. It's not tied to their login. That's important. <laughs> That's important. All right. So it's asking me some stuff. It's saying, hey, what's the ID of the form that, you, uh, that you're that you curious about? Well, I don't know what the ID is. I haven't figured that out yet. But if you go to your browser uh, and we look at, let's see, back here. Uh, the ID is going to be in this thing somewhere. There it is. I know this is really crazy, but just go with it. If you look in the address bar, you're gonna see ID equals. Well, wherever you see ID equals, you're gonna put your little cursor there and you're gonna highlight over. So I'm holding the shift key and the right arrow. And I'm going all the way to the end and I grabbed that whole gnarly looking string of stuff. That's my ID. Now, th this is happening because this, Dwayne and I know this, this form is in a, in a team. It um, doesn't belong to me. Right. It belongs to us. Yep. So it, there is a, there is a drop down that you'll see here that shows all the forms that are your own personal form, but you're not going to find these team forms in mm -hmm. this list. You need to do a custom um, a custom item in this case. And that's why you got to grab that form ID. Yeah. If you go back to forms, episode one, we talked about how a form like a document can live in a specific, uh, it can belong to a specific user. So it can kind of like live in your OneDrive, or it can live in a shared location, like a team where it belongs to everyone who's in the team. Yeah. So every, every form has an ID. Um, but the only reason in this case that we need to get the ID is because it's not going to show up in this drop down uh, yeah. automatically for us. Um, if you're testing this, you're using your own um, your own form, um, using your own um, you know kind of your own process that's not part of a team, then this will this form will just show right up in that list, and you can select right from it. Yeah. So just to recap real quick, because I know I know we're moving fast. I'm really sorry. We're just I, there's a lot that I'm trying to cram into 45 or 50 minutes. Uh, but to recap real quick, we've got a form, which is our mechanism for collecting data. In this case, the scenario is 
external people outside of my school who want to sign up to be a volunteer. This is just a mock-up. They're going to fill this, this questionnaire out. And now I'm going to have information that I've collected from them that I'm probably going to need to do something with it, right? Like I might need to reach out to them and call them, send them an email to find out more details about what they're curious about, where they can help or volunteer. This is what we would call like a business process where we're going to start doing something that you could even replace volunteer requests with, you know, some sort of like work request, like maybe a ticketing system, uh, something that you are uh, going to go out and do site visits. You know, this is where people fill out a form to select when they want to do a site visit. That form has a spreadsheet behind it where we created that spreadsheet first using the new forms for Excel option here right from within Teams. That lets us control where the raw data lives. This spreadsheet will be in, exact, in the exact folder where I want it to be. Sometimes if you don't do it that way, SharePoint will put the, the file somewhere else. Uh, so this is our recommendation on how to do that. And then because it's just Excel and Excel is not a database or Excel is not ultra powerful, it's really good at capturing figures and maybe doing some math with it and some visualizations. We're gonna go a little bit farther and we created a Microsoft list. Microsoft Lists is from our uh, meeting last month where we talked about how lists can be the next step of a spreadsheet. Uh, sorry, my dog is really barking. <laughs> Are you hearing that? I'm not picking it up. Wow. Okay. Uh, all right. Anyway, um, <laughs> Lists is starting to bring us closer to the world of a database. But we need to get the data from forms over into lists we're going to use a uh, product called power automate to do that the ai version of power automate the describe it to design it i think that's such an appropriate name here just lets me say i've got a form i want what's in the form to go to a list and it suggested to me how to how to make that happen but i do have to plug in some values here that value that we collected we're going to paste in that id uh, we have to paste it in twice. So this is the trigger. When a new response is submitted to that gnarly looking thing, which is my volunteer request here, we're going to get the details. So I got to paste it in one more time. And then I want to create an entry in my Microsoft list that we just made inside of the Cloudy County team. So I'm going to drop my Thing down here. This is my Cloudy County team. I can see the address of Shift Show, SharePoint, Teams, Cloudy County Extension. And now I can browse for the list volunteer requests. Create my flow. Oops, wait a minute. It's giving me something new. Let's go ahead and just create flow. I haven't actually finished this entire thing before, Joe. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a little bit to uh, complete there. Let's see. Okay, so we've gotten our we've got our steps. You can this is getting into programmery type things, but again, I'd encourage you to watch the recording, go through this as many times as as you need. But this is going to be the quickest way to get an automated workflow kicked off. So when a new response is submitted, get the details, create an item. All right, it has automatically pulled in the fields the columns that we created in Microsoft Lists. Those columns that we created were created to align or match the questions that we're asking inside of Microsoft Forms. So title is actually first name. Uh, so we're gonna go through here and see it's giving me dynamic content over here on the right. It's automatically suggesting answers from forms. So all you have to do is match them up. So Title is actually first name, last name is last name. Got it, go away. Email is email. It does this funky like scrolling thing sometimes that is a little challenging. Uh, county is county. Ethnicity. Gender. 
and age range and phone number. What Let's happened here, Joe? Phone, phone in the search. There we go. Phone. Awesome. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this. All right. Your flow is ready to go. We recommend you test it, it said. So we can we should be able to test this with a recently uh, submitted response. I think that will work. I, I don't think it'll show up just yet, but I, I just I just sent one down. So if you want to oh, go you did? maybe okay. if you want to go back to the like the interface of the form or of that of that flow real quick. Um, curious if you see it show up. Like if you're gonna okay. go back to the dashboard. Well, I wanted to I wanted to go through the 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 whole process. Kind of the, the whole order of whole operations, loop. right? So yeah. So our we have a new response. You can see all your responses in forms, of course. Um, I can see we've got Three responses. This is from Joe Gasper email. He's got phone. He's in Brown County, all this stuff. Uh, I can see that that data trickled its way down into Excel. This is that raw data. And now uh, the real kicker is going to be, let's see if it's in our list. So nothing yet. <laughs> Re refresh that because I don't see the, all the other columns that you added and everything. Hey, there we go. Good call on the refresh, Joe. <laughs> so we have an automated process that's pulling the data from forms, typing it directly into lists. Now, why is it why why would you care? Why would you want to use this over Excel? We talked about this a little bit last month, but I think it's worth it to talk about it a little bit more. And that's because these entries inside of this uh, database, these are individual items, not just rows and columns like an Excel file. This is an item. I could make comments on this item. I could I could type notes here. You know, I could add additional columns to to this entire. I just keep calling it like a database. So I'm going to make a person column call it uh owner right who owns this request who is going to be the one who's going to reach out and make contact with joe so if i click on this item i can go to uh edit it well we'll go owner and i can type in uh Dwayne. now notice it's it's searching through our internal organization and it's pulling my identity card uh, directly from our Microsoft 365 environment. So I can set this up and jump back into our list and I can look at this. And if there were 20 of these in here, I could see all the ones that Dwayne was responsible for. So this is, I need to, somebody needs to reach out to this. We could add another column and we could call it a, a, this is a drop down choice column and we'll call it status and we'll make uh, it choice and choice one is going to be uh, pending. Choice two is going to be closed. Choice three is going to be blocked and we'll make blocked uh, red. And we'll do that. So now again, I can click on this. And I can go into status and say it's pending. That signals to everybody by looking at this list. Okay, we've got this outstanding request. Uh, it's somebody needs to reach out to Joe Gasper. Here's his contact info. Dwayne's going to do it, but he hasn't done it yet. So now we've got tracking. We've got, you know, that almost like I said, that work order system here, right? So this is our first example of we're collecting information from people outside of our university. We're piping that data into an internal only uh, place inside of Teams. And people on my team can all see that data. And so here's another one. Yep, just piped in. <laughs> um, and we can continue to, to use this like it's a work order system. I'm gonna open this list 
in SharePoint. So I think we talked about this last week as well. And again, I'm really sorry that we're going so fast, but you get different options when you look at a list inside of SharePoint versus just looking at it in Teams. And one of the things that's really important is this automation thing here, creating rules. So these rules, create a rule. Say, anytime a new item is created, send an email to everyone at Shift Show. You know, <laughs> you could put whatever you want in there. And now you've got notifications tied to this process. It's going to, as soon as a new item gets created, uh, the form gets filled out, below pushes it over into Microsoft Lists. Microsoft List is going to push a notification out to let us know there's something new. Or you could say, uh, we're going to automate, create a rule when a uh, column changes. So we'll choose the uh, people column. Where to go? Owner, sorry, owner. Um, we could say, uh, send me something or send an email to wh whoever that owner is. And so if Joe came in here and he said, Peter Vinkman filled this out and I want Joe, I want Dwayne to handle it. He could put my name in and it would send me an email to let me know, hey, you've been more or less assigned this, this item. You need to go look at this item and get it done. And all those things are built in and don't require any extra apps or software or coding. The codiest thing that we did was look at Power Automate. That's the most intimidating part of this. Uh, but it's really not that bad once you realize you just need to get the ID of your form and you just have to match up, you know, you just have to make the stars align when it comes to the work you put into creating lists, you have the matching columns, and then you have your matching questions and you just gotta plug those things in together and make sure they line up. Okay, uh, again, I know this is really fast. I'm really sorry, <laughs> but it took us 47 minutes to get through just that. <laughs> So this is one idea for information collection and kicking off a business process that will show you how you could you could you know build off of this and maybe you know, you know maybe you come up with your own columns that make things uh, for your for your business or you come up with your own view. So this is a, a really powerful part. You can show and hide columns without removing them. So how many of you have gone into an Excel file? <laughs> how many of you have gone into an Excel file that was shared with everybody and you filtered it and it filtered it for everybody else too? <laughs> and when they went and looked at their Excel file, they're like, what the heck, where's all my stuff? You can do what are called views. So you can show and hide and group by and all kinds of stuff. So we could go into status uh, and we could say uh, filter by and show me all the requests that are pending. Don't show me everything. Only show me the ones that haven't been handled yet. Right now, this is the temporary view. This is a, I just did that manually. So I went to the just like you would in Excel. I went to the filter here, filter by filter by pending. Well, now I want to save this. I want to make sure that everybody else can use this super awesome view that I just created. Well, you can go here and you can say, save my current view as, and we'll just call it pending, whoops, caps lock, pending items. Notice this check mark here. You can make this available to everyone to use the cool view that you made, or you can save it as your own view. So this is the way that Dwayne likes to consume this data. I can look at the things, maybe only look, show me the ones where I'm the owner. I don't care about everything else. <laughs> maybe there's 5,000 items here and I just need to see the ones that are pending and say owner is Dwayne. That could be my own personal view. So I'll save this view. And now you see pending items and we can go back to all items and we can filter this list however we want. So yeah, so Joe just changed this one to blocked. We couldn't get a hold of him. Phone number says it's disconnected or no longer in service. How do you we fix that? Click that little filter icon on the right above that column. Just gives you a view, quick view to, to all of those that are optional there. Sorry, what? This icon? Click that, yeah, that filter. There yeah. you go. Just a quick view to kind of all the all the options that are in one view there. Yeah, filtering, views, grouping, uh, those are those are pretty powerful.
Uh, so let's talk about a second scenario. So we showed you a scenario where you're collecting information from people, right? Let's talk about let's talk about you inputting information. You are in the field and you're taking measurements. Do you want to edit a spreadsheet from your iPhone? Probably not. That doesn't sound fun. So we're going to go look at our forms. Um, let me close out some tabs here. I've got a form, uh, forms. Compost readings. Who doesn't like to talk about compost? So I've made a form. Let me preview it so you can see what it would look like if we were going to fill it out. But we're going to fill this out from an iPhone, right? Because that's where we are. We're literally out in the field taking readings. You could make this form bookmark it, make it a shortcut to it on your home screen of your phone, whatever you want to do. And now when you go out and you're doing this process on a routine basis, you can do this all from your phone now. So we're going to select our, our cow plop. We're going to take three different temperature readings and we're going to input them in here. And then let's see what the data looks like. So we've got our form. Uh, Joe, I don't think I made the flow yet, but I do think I made the list. Yep. So I did make the list already. You all saw us do that just a minute ago. We've got our plop readings one, two, and three. We're going to go into Power Automate. Uh, we're going to go new flow. Describe it to me. Uh, select forms responses to SharePoint list. Use an AI again. Yep, that looks perfect. I'm going to go through this even faster. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let me get my ID number. That's not it. Got my form ID. All right, we're going to create an item. The title is going to be the plop, and then reading one. Reading two. And reading three. Okay, so this form, you know what? Can you all help me out? Can you fill in some... Uh, some compost, <laughs> some compost information for me. I'll drop this in the chat. I'm going to actually do it from my phone because I feel like that shows that this is real. So uh, if y'all can see that, but I'm going to fill this out on my phone. So I took a reading from plop one and we really just made this up. It was uh, 34, 36, and 42. Okay, so we've got some submissions going there. Uh, let's take a look at our file. So we had our compost folder. See how many readings we got from y'all. Nice. Okay. So we got a bunch of readings coming in. Uh, we're going to take a, let's close out of this. We're going to take a look at our list. Mm, did I break it? Well, let's, uh, let's check the flow uh, dashboard. Whoops. My flows. Oh, says it did it. That was good. Oh, there they go. It just took it a second. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Lots of readings, right? Uh, this is kind of boring. So we're going to spend the last six minutes talking about a super special cherry on top of the automation cake that we just made for you. Uh, remember, 
you get more options in SharePoint. You know, you've got some integration options here, but you don't have all of them. So when you're looking at a Microsoft list tab inside of Teams, if you click that meatball menu and say open in SharePoint, you're going to see your integration options. And one of those integration options is Power BI. I am not a data expert. I need to make that very clear. I barely know how to push this button and make this thing come on. But what I can tell you is Power BI is a data visualization tool. We now have data. We've got readings from specific places and we've got three readings from each place. I can click visualize this list. I need to sign in to Power BI because I forgot to do that. Uh, the first time you do this, when it prompts you to sign in, it's just going to take you to the Power BI homepage. Um, and that's not what I need. So I actually need to click that button a second time. So we're going to go, now that I'm signed into Power BI, visualize this list. My report is ready. What do you think it's going to say, Joe? Oh, that's cool. I think. So we have some sum readings up at the top here. We've got some automatic bar graphs that it made for us, and we can tweak these things. I really wish I had a Power BI expert. I might be able to find one, um, but it ain't me. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but you can go into these things and you can edit this. Um, well, I can't edit it because I don't have a Power BI Pro license. Uh, but you can you can edit these and change that to like maybe say average. You know, I need the average reading across the last six weeks of this temperature that I just took. You know, so the benefits here to make this worth your while are. Number one, you can fill in this form from a very small screen. If you're in a compost pile, hopefully you're in some sort of like hazmat suit or something. So get yourself a little, you know, little stylus and a one of those, you know, military grade otter boxes or something for your phone <laughs> and punch it in with a pin, you know, and take your readings. I have a real story uh, from an estate. Somebody, somebody's on here from that state. I should, uh, a state in the Northeast, uh, where there were people walking around in cow compost, taking temperature readings on a clipboard and then taking a picture of the clipboard and then text messaging it to the extension agent. So this extension agent is getting incoming media messages of photographs of a handwritten clipboard <laughs> which he's then going in and putting that data somewhere, probably entering it into Qualtrics or whatever, and trying to make, you know, collect, you know, get the history and get analytics and those types of things off of that. Well, instead of doing that, our suggestion is make this form, send it to them, have them select their compost pile or however you divide them up and name them and enter it in quickly. And with a little tiny bit of power automate and some wizardry on the back end, you know, your end result is an automatic visualization of every reading that came from that list. I think that's pretty, pretty powerful. So our two scenarios, just to recap real quick, were you collecting information uh, from other people? Let me close out a few of these tabs here. You collecting information from other people? And using that information for a business process, like tracking their signups for something, tracking a request for a site visit or, you know, a broken, whatever it might be, renting a piece of equipment, renting a building. Uh, and then we also showed you how to take the exact same tools and just shift your mindset a little bit and use those tools for doing data collection yourself from the field so that you have an your own custom app basically that you've created that lets you punch in numbers much quicker than editing an Excel spreadsheet from an iPhone or an iPad or a tablet or whatever, because that's not fun. And you don't want to drop your expensive, you know, Surface 9 in a compost pile, I'm sure. <laughs> so I, I think that data collection tablet. is important too, real quick, because if remember we saw them created that form, 
you could specify a number and you could specify it needs to be greater than, less than, it needs to be between values. So that can help you get um, more accurate data input, maybe not end up with uh, fat fingering something and, and not making sure that you got um, you know correct value in there. So those are some things that can help you um, maybe somebody's handwriting isn't great. Um, I pretty much can only decode mine. <laughs> so um, if you've got somebody writing this out uh, in a, on a clipboard somewhere too, this can really help with that. Yeah. Yeah. Again, uh, I'll, I'll finish with this was a literal fire hose of information today, uh, but we had so many meetings before this that I felt, I don't know, I felt obligated to give you something that made it all come together a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense, Joe, but like we showed you all this stuff and I just really wanted to show you what it can all do. You know, we went, we fast forwarded a little bit and went into Power Automate really rapidly and really quickly. Uh, but hopefully you see, and if you go back and watch this recording, I'll get it on YouTube today. Uh, you can kind of follow along and just, just play with it. Just Make up, you know, we were literally goofing off with this today. <laughs> you know, you can goof off too. make a, make a team with a friend, drop some forms inside of it, connect them with some lists, you know, and some power automate and just see if you can make it work and then start to go through, uh, you know, and refine it and customize it to meet your needs. Yeah. There's, so, there's ways to, I, I'd imagine just, um, the one that the one form that we created is, you know, it's a, it's a request form. You often want to at least let them know that you you got something from them. And that's where that flow could kick off an email even. So looking through those flow, that Power Automate template, um, you can discover all these options that are available to you um, and start putting them kind of in, like you saw that flow, you chain them together. Um, you get an action to get started or a trigger to get started. And then all these actions can kind of flow and build upon each other. Yeah. All right. I'm going to kill the recording, but I can stay on for a little bit longer in case I'm sure hopefully there's questions because <laughs> hopefully everybody thought this was pretty cool. Uh, but we'll be back uh, next month for some new some new stuff. So we'll cover a whole new product, talk about a whole new thing and do it all over again. So that's fun. Thanks, Thanks everybody. And if you're watching the recording, uh, I really do appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.